Hey everyone, we're just going to jump right into the video today. As you can see in the bowl, <clears throat> excuse me, I already have flour and I just added some salt. And right now I will be adding a couple tablespoons of baking powder. I know this seems like a lot, but you want to get a lot of lift in the dough when you add it or when you place it into the oil to fry or bake it for that matter. So once everything is in the bowl, all the dry ingredients, and just move everything around. I'm sure I forgot what I just added there as I did have to redo this audio afterwards. Uh, concerning the fact that there was a lot of background noise that I could barely hear myself talking during the whole thing. Which for some is a good thing, but you know, not when I'm trying to make a video. So here I am adding some room temperature butter. And as always, I will have the complete recipe down below in the description, along with instructions for you to read. So now what we're going to do is we're basically going to crumble the butter and flour mixture together. Almost like if you were making a pie crust or even cookie dough to a degree, uh, a certain type of cookie. But yeah, you basically want to get pea size grains, work it all together. And if you feel that the butter is getting too soft, throw the whole mixture into the fridge for about 15 minutes to cool it down. And uh, <clears throat> and bring it back out and keep working it. So here you can just see, I'm just still trying to break down some of the bigger pieces of butter but then decide, eh, whatever. So in the bowl, that was just two eggs and a little bit of water mixed together, scrambled up, obviously, and we're gonna start working that into the dough or into the dry mixture. And what you wanna do is you wanna bring everything together. Just like so, you wanna bring it all together. Eventually, you're gonna turn this out onto the board and start kneading it there. But try to do as much as you can inside the bowl so you don't make a big mess for yourself. And as you can see, yes, your fingers are gonna get gummed up. Again, one of those times where if I was smart, I would have taken off the ring. And uh, so I would suggest doing that. Same to you. If you have any jewelry on, take it off. Just keep kneading it. Now, some people call this bannock. Some people call it fry bread. I know every culture has their own type of uh, fried dough, uh, so to speak. Um, where my family is from, Newfoundland, we have a thing called Towtons, which is basically the same thing. But it's more of a bready dough. And uh, just fry it in a little bit of butter and it's very popular. So as you can see, I, I've pretty much done all the kneading I can. You want it somewhat smooth. It will still be a little bit sticky. But that's okay, because eventually we are just going to let this rest for about an hour. And because you want everything to come back together, you want to make sure the flour is hydrated. You want to make sure that everything is dissolved. And as you can see, Pretty good. I just used the same bowl, no oil or anything like that, uh, because this is not a yeast fermented bread dough. It's not going to stick. So, as you can see, I let it rest for. You should let it rest for at least a half hour. I got caught up on a few other things, so this rested for about an hour and a half, two hours. So, <clears throat> what we 
do is here is we're going to remove it from the bowl and now I, I doubled this recipe from the recipe that I'm going to be putting down into the description. I doubled it. So normally you would just cut this dough into fours. You would have a little, you know, half as much dough. I'm cutting it into eight. I have eight pieces of uh, bannock. Now also too, uh, you're going to find that once you get going and make and ball it out, you're going to notice that uh, this is almost more like a pastry dough, um, which was different as I'm used to a more bready dough um, when I make bannock or when my sister-in-law makes bannock for us. Um, wasn't used to this. It was a little bit different. I didn't mind it. I liked it to each their own. Um, the consistency, this came out more like a, a fried uh, pastry almost, which was good, but you know, it, 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 uh, it was there. So we're going to take each piece, ball it up. As you can see, this is what I'm doing there. And I put a little piece of dough into the oil always do because that just tells me when the oil is good to go or the oil is good to go another fancy way of doing it if you have a popcorn kernel uh, the kind you put into an air popper you take a kernel place that into oil into the oil once the oil is hot enough around 350 355 that kernel is going to pop so once the kernel pops oil is ready to go So we're just gonna keep on keeping on here, keep rolling it out. Yes, I kept the camera going for all this. That's okay. And I start flattening it out. Now, as I was doing these eight, you want to get these as flat as you can. I've noticed that uh, the flatter you get them, the more puffier they get. If that makes sense. You'll see in a little bit here toward the end of the video I'll take one that puffed up so much that inside it was hollow and it was very nice very crispy uh, made it into an Indian taco I just used that as my taco shell and put everything into it um, some people I know when they make Indian tacos they just take the manic onto the plate and put everything on top of it and Bob's your uncle, good to go. It was nice to have this. No, granted, it was still messy when I was eating it, but it was very good. <clears throat> so I'm just about to readjust the camera here. There we go. You can see I have two pieces in so far. This, just like always, the very first couple of pieces, they're always the test run. So you can see I have very clean oil. I use vegetable oil. Any uh, neutral oil will do. Uh, vegetable, canola, sunflower. Uh, definitely stay away from olive oil because olive oil will just turn smoky real fast. Uh, like I said, you will just want a neutral oil. And boom, here you go. Here they are all done. You can see the one right there with the hole in it is the one I used for my Indian taco. And, like I said, you know, you keep it in the oil until it gets fried to golden brown and delicious, just like that. See, it's nice and thin. It tasted fantastic. I liked it. It was a little bit different than the normal bannock we're used to. But hey, that happens. So to put together an Indian taco, this is all I did. I have the taco meat there that we made earlier. And I just scooped some inside. I put in about two or three spoonfuls. Obviously you want to have enough there that you, you, you know, it's, there you go. I didn't go too crazy with it. And then to that, I added some tomato, some onion, 
Uh, I know the container says cool or you know dessert whip, but trust me, there's tomatoes in it. And I put some onion, cheese, obviously, some tomatoes, onion. I know I've said onion many, many times now so far. And uh, some of the uh, salsa toward the end. Uh, and that was I actually not even salsa, it's that taco sauce that comes in the box. Yes, I know. I've had tomatoes here. Why didn't I make my own salsa? Well, I didn't want to. So, that's an Indian taco. Hope you liked the video. Uh, thus, in turn, Bannock. Hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe. The recipe will be down in the description. I greatly appreciate it, all you people that watch this. And... There's a couple pictures of the finished product, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.